So Kirchhoff's laws are very intuitive conservation rules for circuits. Yeah? So these are hopefully not going to be memorized by you. They're going to be understood. That's what I would like you to try to achieve with everything in physics. All right. Kirchhoff is spelled like this. With two H's and two F's. I don't know anything about who that is. I'm assuming it's a person. Um, all right, so the first Kirchhoff rule is the Kirchhoff junction rule. Uh, junction rule. Which states that the algebraic sum of all currents into a junction is zero. So let me say that in a less cryptic way. If you have some junction, and you have something like this, right? And you have, and the current is flowing this way, right? We can say that if this direction to the right is positive, right? Then here, coming out of it, that would be negative, right? If you're talking about like the flow in, the flow out, that'd be negative and that'd be negative. So if positive is into and negative is out of, and you add all that up, right? So you have I1 and then I2, I3, I4. If you add up I1 plus I2 plus I3 plus I4, you know, these being negative, because they're coming out of the circuit, right? Then you get zero. Yeah, so a way to write this would be the sum of all current equal to zero. In other words, the total current flowing into any junction must be equal to the total flow out of that junction. And if you think about it, um, if there were more charge flowing into a circuit than out, then uh, you'd have you'd be destroying charge there, right? Um, if there was no charge buildup at that point and you had less charge flowing out than flowing in, then where is that charge going? You'd be destroying charge. And there's a law of conservation of charge just like energy. You can actually relate those two. One's kind of the other. And so uh, this violates conservation um, of charge. And so we know that that just doesn't happen. You're not just going to be destroying charge. There's not some, like, universal drain uh, that, that appears at a, at a circuit junction that just sucks charge out of existence. It has to go somewhere. On the other situation, if there's more current flowing out of a junction than there is flowing into it, then that means that um, you've evidently discovered a source of charge, a source of energy being created and at that space and time in, in our universe, which, again, we know does not happen by law of conservation of energy. Um, of course, if it does happen, and you can show that it happens, then tell me, and we'll go collect our Nobel Prize together. But um, for all experiments done, there is such a thing as conservation of charge, conservation of energy, conservation of momentum. The second very intuitive conservation uh, rule is called Kirchhoff's loop rule. Loop rule. And that states that the algebraic sum of the potential differences in any loop is zero. And this one is perhaps even more intuitive. The algebraic sum of all potential differences. So I was using purple to describe our potential differences. If you start up here, and then you go down, and then you go down, and then you go up, and then you go down, and it doesn't matter what you do, um, for this to be a loop, for this to, you know, make its way back to the same elevation, looks like here, and continue on, um, the sum of this down, this down, this up, this down, this up, and this up must equal zero, right? It's kind of like a tautological statement that, um, you know, to arrive back at the same quote-unquote elevation, you have to go down as much as you go up, right? So if you think about, like, walking on a circular path or just some looped path along the side of a mountain. Um, you might be going down 
during some part of your journey and up in other part of your journey. But if you were to arrive back at the same part in uh, of your you know mountain, if you're standing here and there's a nice little tree next to you, right? Um, and you walk along and you do this kind of cool loop here. In order to get back to the same spot, you have to, of course, be at the same elevation, right? If you were to walk here and then somehow or another enter the mountain, like in a train tunnel, and you said, ooh, this is cool, and you end up directly below where you were, sure, you're directly below it, but you're not at the same spot. You are not, uh, you can't then continue on in your loop and just teleport up here, right? So that would just be some spiral. So in order for it to actually be a true loop, right? You start at a spot, take any journey you please, doesn't matter, you can go all the way to China and then come back to your mountain, and then you end up at that same spot, uh, you have to have gone up the same amount that you went down. And so the way that we can write that is the sum of all the potential differences, right, must equal zero. Some of all the voltage drops or the EMF uh, uh, voltage rises, right, <laughs> um, all of that has to equal zero. All right, so uh, I'm going to leave the next example that I was going to do to the notes here. Um, maybe I'll circle back and do it if there's time. But I think I'm going to continue on to capacitors in series and parallel.